Hello everyone, the Network Bear Gear. Hope you've been doing well. In this video, we'll be going over how to install Microsoft Visual Studio Code. So we're going to be installing a Microsoft program on Linux, which is funny, but it's very useful. It will help us in order to code when we're using stuff like Ansible or maybe even Python. If you're looking to become an automation engineer through scripting with Python, I mean, that's completely valid. And you can use Visual Studio Code for that as well, and it will help you with your coding. So let's jump into the video. All right, so let's get started. Let's install Visual Studio Code on Ubuntu. So I'm going to use this fresh desktop that I have. We've only installed Ansible on it and I want to install Visual Studio Code. So how am I going to do that? <laughs> so on this desktop, we're going to use our browser and we're just going to search Visual Studio Code. And this will bring us to the search page and we can see there's Visual Studio Code. I can just click on it. It'll open up the website for me. And from here, I will have options to download Visual Studio Code. So there's two formats I can see. One is for Debian and Ubuntu, and the other one I can see Red Hat and Fedora. So I'm using Ubuntu, so I'm going to download this .deb file. It's going to tell me it's going to download. There we go. Let's just save our file somewhere on the disk on this machine. It's busy downloading. And there we can see what code kind of looks like, the things we can do with it. But I'm not too bothered about that right now. We'll get to more of the code things when we're actually in it. I just want to install Visual Studio Code. So let's go to that directory and let's install it. We're probably going to have to run this in sudo, but it will tell us to do that. So let's run the install. All right, there we go. So let's authenticate. And it's installing. So <laughs> this video is a lot shorter than I expected. Um, no, but it is really quick to install Visual Studio Code. Just remember, this is just an addition to help you with coding. This is not necessary to code. Uh, this is not necessary to automate. This is just a text editor which will give you suggestions and which will help you with your syntaxes and coding and such. So that's why people get Visual Studio Code. That's why it's, it's nice to have. It's not, it's not a necessity. You can still use a text editor to do all of your coding, like, like just Nano, or you can just Vim a file and do the code in there. But you might accidentally do something in the wrong format and then it won't work. So I've installed code. So where is my Visual Studio code? I'm on the desktop, I can't see it. What the heck's going on? <laughs> so if I scroll down, this is where all our applications are on Linux. And if I go to all, I should see code here somewhere. So let's just scroll around, there we go. So there's Visual Studio code. So I could probably just right click this and add it to my favorites so that it's here at the sidebar. And then I can open Visual Studio code. All right, so we're in Visual Studio Code. Before we start doing anything like creating files, let's just make a slight change in the terminal window. So I want you to head to the terminal and from the terminal, I actually want you to change the ownership of your user for the folder where we have our playbooks saved. And this is now for Ansible, but if you were going to maybe do it for Python, you could change the ownership for your Python folder just so that you have permission to write files. Because if you try and save a file now, Visual Studio Code is going to throw you a permissions error. All right. So what I want you to do is run a sudo chown, ch own, which is change ownership, minus r, capital R, and then your user account. In our case here, it's user. And then the next step is the directory where you want to give this user the access to right now. So we're going to do this for ETC and Sybil playbooks. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to type in my admin password and there we go. It's changed that ownership for that user. Now I can close the window 
and I can head back into code and now we can finally create a file so let's head on file let's create new file by clicking new file or you can hit Control n on your keyboard and this will give us a text space a canvas where we can actually write things so this is like me doing a nano in the terminal but this will allow me to actually start using text now first thing i want you to do is save the file let's make sure we can save so let's do a save it's going to tell me where do you want to save what so what i want you to do is navigate to your other locations go into your computer go into etc which is where we know where ansible is and it's the same directory we just given the right permissions so we need to find ansible in here and we need to go into the playbooks so we're going to be saving our file in the playbooks folder if this was for a different um, thing like python like i said you could save it into that python folder so i'm going to save this now and i'm going to call it test playbook and let's hit enter oh don't hit enter yet just specify the file name this is a dot yml because it's a yaml file and i'm saving it and there we go Ta-da! <laughs> we have our first actual script file it is a yaml file and with this we're going to be able to do some scripting in ansible so i'm going to be cutting off the video here i'd like to thank you for watching in the future videos we will actually be starting a few things with ansible we'll be going over through some base theory and be doing some base things on ansible itself and then we will start creating awesome playbooks in order to automate devices like cisco juniper micritic howie and any other vendor that you can think of so thanks so much for watching i'll catch you in the next video